This is World Comics slightly sniffy review, and my camera's really out of focus. So today and yesterday were the Shitenoji market again, and I often go there and want to um do videos about the stuff I bought, but I can never be bothered to edit them together properly. So why not live stream it instead, eh? So anyway, let's uh get going, and I hope I don't sneeze or have my nose run like crazy. I have to sniff too loud during this video. Anyway, first thing I bought is this. It's the issue of uh, the Shufu no Tomo, which is um, the housewife's friend or something like that from July. Uh, Showa, where's the date? Showa Juichi, Showa 11, which I believe is 1936. Yeah. Get to my trusty reference picture on the phone, my extremely slow phone. Right, yes, show, uh, let me show uh, 11 is 1936, right, so this is for July 1936, and I bet the weather was much nicer then than it is now. So this is the uh, housewife's friend, and as you can see, quite a brick. And uh, I'll shift the camera around, yes. shift the camera around and have a better look at it in a minute. Continuing the theme of a uh, pre-war Japanese magazines, we have this. This is the Ie no Hikari, which is um, the yeah, Ie no Hikari, which means House of Light or the Lighthouse. And this is the uh, February issue for Showa 12, so 1937. <laughs> and uh, this is a uh, magazine kind of aimed at children in general, boys and girls, so like adventure stories and stuff. And then at the end there's a Kodomo no Ie no Hikari, which is for even younger children and has like big, big lettering. And then from after the war we have this, this is a Shoujo no Tomo, so we have the uh, housewife's friend, this is the girl's friend. This is the issue for, can I see, oh, Hachigatsu, so August. Uh, Showa uh, Nijuroku, Showa uh, 26, which I believe is, I'm going to check my reference anyway, 1951. So kind of thin, still some shortages. And uh, yeah, this uh, style of a uh, text story paper magazine was um, dying out in favour of manga anyway at the time. So yeah, those are the uh, things I got which are vaguely interesting. And uh, Right now, middle temperature of hot and cold. Putting this on, but won't zip it up. That'll uh, be all right, right in the middle. Right, slightly more interesting. Maybe not. I got this. It's a Hi8 camcorder, complete-ish in box. So we got a power cables, two batteries, a uh, filter to go on the lens. I'm not gonna bother showing all this, all the manuals. Here, two batteries and uh, two external battery adapters so you can have a battery inside it and one on the bottom. I don't know why you'd have need two adapters but never mind. Battery charger which is also a pass through to the camera so you can run it off the mains. And of course, of course the carrying handles caught and everything else. The camera itself, the size of this day, eh? this was compact back in this day. I'm guessing its day was circa 1994 or so. And yeah, it uses a high 8 which is a 8 millimeter, I believe, magnetic tape. And high 8 means it can record in something like 30, I mean 530 something lines, which is comparable to laser disc resolution, I believe. And uh, yep, it costs 300 yen and it's broken. There's actually a tape in there which I can't eject. So, uh, it's got some life in it, but uh, yeah, the batteries are kind of knackered. They say they're fully charged, but then when you look down the viewfinder, they're almost exhausted. So I run it off the mains, but um, yeah, when you first switch it on, it kind of tries to feebly eject the tape and it doesn't. So it has to like come up and then come out. And uh, yeah, there's a tiny eject button here. And if you press that, it kind of feebly tries to eject the tape again, but it doesn't. So yeah, I'm gonna have it in bits and try and fix it so I can get on with a, I've got an out somewhere. 
are here. Uh, composite output or even S video, but I haven't got an S video thingy. Yeah, composite outputs, so I can um, if I fix it, I can play my growing collection of video eight tapes through it and um, and rip them to digital. I did a, uh, I got loads of video eight tapes before that I talked about in another video, and uh, it's your um. Uh, they're not people's home like home videos they recorded with a camera. They're um, rips from VHSs. I guess back in the day VHSs were really expensive, so people, somebody anyway, bought when well, I rented VHSs of porn and anime, and um, copied them to video eight tapes, which are much smaller, for storing in tiny Japanese flats, and then took them back to the rental shop. I suppose. So yeah, I ripped one that had three or four porn VHSs on it started to rip one which had loads of um episodes of this anime called Nadia Secret of Blue Water on and then my video 8 VCR broke I might try and fix that too it takes the tapes in and then immediately ejects them and there's some kind of clunky cogs on one side I can't close this case up again there's like some clunky cogs on one side Maybe just some of them are out of alignment or something, so maybe I can fix it with my meager technical skills. Right, closed it. So yeah, complete-ish inbox junk video 8 camcorder, which cost a whole 300 yen. And the same store had, um, I think, five 8mm sound uh, projectors for the old 8mm film. And they were all junk for 300 yen too. And a uh, oops, small burp. So uh, I kind of regret not buying one of those just to have as a display piece. Not that I have any empty shelves to put a display piece on, but yeah, they looked really kind of interesting and uh, probably even easier as a fix than a camcorder. It's all mechanical and stuff. Anyway, that was the haul of yesterday. And uh, the second day, which was today, people tend to close up and disappear. And I went fairly late, kind of like half one in the afternoon so most of the stands were gone and it's also freezing cold so I don't suppose they wanted to hang around but anyway um, I saw a mini disc which takes AA batteries for a thousand gen but I didn't have an AA battery on me or earphones to check if it worked it probably didn't but also I got this it's Doctor Strange on DVD so uh yeah the MCU's cool but I don't want to um fund Disney and Marvel as much as I can, so I buy second-hand ones. But um, in Japan, the MCU all come out in these kind of double packs that have a Blu-ray and a DVD for about four thousand something yen, and they really hold their value. So even the second-hand ones about three thousand five hundred yen. Dehydrated a bit, but this is a, a German edition completely bare bones it seems to be just the film at least if I, what I can interpret from the back cover is and uh, oh yeah when you go to the Shit energy sale and buy physical media always make sure what what's inside is what you actually want to buy I've got some weird Korean um, Korean pop in a cassette box which I thought was Korean crooning and uh, yeah this is as a Spraken English so um, yeah I'm gonna watch Doctor Strange sometime very bare bones DVD. Oh, this was a this was three hundred yen too, so like a less than ten percent of the usual price of MCU movies in Japan. And um, yep, that's the uh, Shit Energy Sale haul. I'm sure I bought something else actually. Can't remember what now. I bought something else small, probably a can drink or something. I can't even remember. So um, right, let's try and um, first try of a. Uh, trying to move this camera onto the bracket I normally put my video camera on and look through these old story papers and magazines right I don't know if I actually do this and um, oh yeah the microphone is not on the camera um, right this is all good these cables are all tangled up unplug the mouse oh, that's the mouse and not the camera Move the microphone around behind the computer to next to me. Right. Turn around. 
Where's the clip? This is going to look interesting on the replay, isn't it? <laughs> What's he doing? Okay, sort of. That was a lucky catch. Oops. Okay, ish. Right, I can't actually see what I'm videoing now. The screen's at 90 degrees to where I am. Right, let's begin with the interesting one. The Shoujo no Toma, the girl's friend from... 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 Here, okay. That's convenient. <laughs> from 1951. So, um, yeah, mostly text stories and articles, but manga was taking over, of course, so there's some comic strips in here. Very simplistic front page. Oh, yeah, it says here, August 1951. Sio no Toma, using a archaic romanization. Uh, some woman. Pictures of something. Are they are modeling new clothes or something. This is in Manato no Yomo Yume. Is this an advert for a bed? It's like sleeping on a flower. It doesn't sound comfortable, actually. Nice oh, Charlie's London, Japanese version. Right, so some comic strips for this comic channel. Miko chan. General mischievous little girl or something with the same exactly the same hairstyle as her mother. More about Miko chan. Rensai manga Perakoto Mochan. Everything's Chan. That's like um little child. It's like um instead of Mr. or Mrs. before the name. Japan has loads of things that come after the name, and Chan is like young child. So yeah, black and white. This looks like the style of Machiko Hasegawa, but I don't think it is. Can't read this name. I'm pretty sure this isn't Machiko Hasegawa, but it's someone really closely copying her style. Oh, it's a um, it's a postcard. Oh, it's like um, in Shonen Jump, you can send a postcard in and vote for your favorite story. I guess this is the same thing, just from 1951. Okay. I should send it in. I vote for this uh, Pero Miko, whatever chan. Uh, this something by Techiko. Boyfriendo. Oh, the types of boyfriend, I guess. Baseball player, studious student guy. Don't know, straight laced guy. Report, even more studious student guy. Fashionable guy and artist. Right, types of boyfriend. Uh, right, it's a text story about some girls in a car. Let's not go for everything, and this will go on for about four hours. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, another short comic strip. This one is... Urusai... Urusai hai. Urusai means noisy, but, like, shouting Urusai at someone means shut up. So uh, I saw a junior high student, like say that to a teacher without thinking once and um, yeah the teacher was not happy and uh, i guess flies are bothering this girl's dad while he's trying to eat so she gets the mosquito net off the baby and puts it over him continuing this text story handsome got another comic strip yeah yep a girl falls out of a tree uh, a good article about movies maybe it's gonna quick flick right another text story Looks more comedic, just in the style of the illustrations. Uh, is this all the same story? Right. Is this a poem? This long, long... You can't even see. I forget this isn't HD. This long Q letter means repeat this. Repeat the previous two letters. So it's... Uh, horror, horror. There's also a long goo, which I means put, put the sound modifier on the second letter. Or, I don't know. They stopped using that in um actually stopped before they stopped using it in 1945 but apparently not it was used in songs a lot repeat the say repeat the previous two sounds here is a photo of a schoolgirl and a school grounds i guess die or or kina no or kini is like the osaka way to say thank you is this like a comedy article the um osakan Dialect is used a lot in comedy. Is this an Os article about schoolgirls in Osaka? I don't know. Uh, a diary. I guess this is a um, text story in diary format about funny things that happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was... 
Is this firewood? I guess it's firewood. Oof. She went to get some firewood and it all fell down on her. What right, more sinister, sinister mystery looking story? Cow, kawai, kawai. That's cute. It should be kawai. So, kawai sauna. Yeah, I guess, um, I don't know. Archaic Romanization. Because yeah, ka, yeah, kawaii. There's two eyes. Kawaii, I guess this is meant to be scary. Kawaii sauna, mala, maluda, right? S scary murder, very scary murder, even. Is this the shadow? Right, it's the bad guy's shadow. This girl was murdered by a hammer, I guess. Not a murder mystery story. This could be like um that detective story that was in the girl's crystal. I forget the name of it. Monosiri Postop. Is this um uh, letters from readers? Right, okay, uh, Wild West adventure story, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. I wonder if the character's Japanese or American. Uh, another comic strip. This is um I keep forgetting to I think I'm gonna read it this way. Hogara Kami. Oh. No, this is not me, Katakana. This is San Kanji, which means three. So, Hogaraka Sanjo, Sanjoshi. I guess that means three, three children. They get kidnapped by woolly mammoths. This is kind of long, actually. Oh, five pages. All right, yeah, another. Looks kind of like fairy, fairy tale land, like sort of thing, like maybe Little Nemo in Slumberland. But not a dream. All right, this is a continuation of a text story. About another one. This moonlight. This means moonlight. Something, something, something. Moonlight, something. Moonlight sonata, maybe. He's playing the violin. <laughs> is moonlight sonata a piece of violin? I don't even know. Well, right, I guess a story about a girl, maybe junior high age girl dating or something. Right, no, uh, okay, that's a nice name for the comic strip. Yeah, you can't even see. I can't see what's on the screen. All right. There was a keen spot comic strip that was just one question mark. This is three question marks, so it's even better. Kind of aping Machiko Hasegawa style too, but more detailed. Uh, right, another text story. This is um Sayor Sayoko Wah. Sayoko. That could be a girl's name. Maybe that's her name. Wah, dunno. I should know this. I, I did know this letter. This one means this is like three in six. I don't know what three in six means together. You know, I just try and not go through everything. We'll be all night. Well, I guess about uh, another mystery detective story. Police investigating something. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Japan was still occupied by the USA at the time. So this could be GHQ, American military government. <laughs> something, something, something. Five five three is that the um that was like the you can't even see that because this revolution is really low. I keep forgetting five five three was the propaganda slogan of um the Washington Naval Treaty. It was like a propaganda victory for Japan. They were allowed fewer battleships, but yeah, it's an explanation for another day. Right, long mystery story. Another comic strip, very simply drawn one about ballet. Accidentally kicks the teacher in the face. Oh, she's got a kendo mask. <laughs> you can't see any of this. It's so low resolution. I need to try and get my good video camera to function as a webcam. We'll do a deep dive into one of these, or all of these, at some point. Right, anyway, that's Shoujo Otomo, 1951. Let's change to the Ie no Hikari from February 1930. Seven, I believe. I've forgotten now. Right. Fold out contents pages. Let's not go for everything again. Right, that's the fold out contents page. Let me show you that. Right, nice reproduced traditional style painting. I don't know if this is actually a traditional old painting or one that was made for the um for the paper. On the other side, photo article. Is this a, is this a Yasukuni shrine? Very military looking. I guess these are like army cadet boys. 
possibly the Japanese Boy Scouts. It looks kind of like the Fleur de Lis, which is used as the logo of the Boy Scouts, and some patriotic schoolgirls with their flags. <laughs> A bit for watches more photos there's um uh, i guess it's the uh season's changing it's going to be springtime soon that was mussolini and hitler is that hitler maybe oh yeah hitora uh some other people wait is that, um shim oh yeah 1936 that's when uh edward the thingy edward the seventh abdicated to marry wallace simpson i guess this is him going to america are they Chinese, maybe? This is like, oh yeah, Sekai, not something. World News. It's the uh, Chinese government that completely voluntarily volunteered to co um, cooperate with Japan, completely of their own free will. Mussolini, Hitler. Yuki, this is snow, like skiing. Uh, this guy, these guys, some people in Japan. Uh, oh, whaling. Okay. Catching whales um, and sumo. Inevitable sumo wrestling. Is that Tojo? Maybe. Right, comic strips. Very simple ones. Manga on in Manga Olympics. Oh, yeah, 36. Was that an Olympic year? <laughs> yeah, I think 36 or 37 was the German Olympics, wasn't it? Uh, somebody following a woman hidden in a box. Uh, are they? Oh, they're soldiers. Okay, soldiers spraying the. Oh, techy. Techy means enemy because I always say techy sago, which is enemy language. Soldiers spraying water on the techy in winter, and they all freeze. <laughs> okay, blah blah blah. Oh, they're firemen, right? Some uh, women gossiping about men. Uh, <laughs> what's this? This one's hard to see unless I bring it close to the camera. I guess they're complimenting each other on their like worked, well worked traditional hairstyles and they bow to each other and it both reveals they're both just wearing wigs over their normal messy hair. Um greenhouses on the side of a mountain. North Korea should try that. Is this uh potatoes? The journey of potatoes from the farm to your home. Um Making spindles of cotton for uh, factories. Right. I keep saying, don't go for everything, we'll be here all night. Let's keep flicking, right? Horse racing. Blah, blah, blah. Is this a. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, red washes over the black and white artwork. Some sort of article or story about family life. Some, um, some school children. I don't know, this is, is this a story? An right. article about some guy illustrated with photos. Are there any stories in this? It's all factual articles. Uh, planes dropping bombs on Japan. I thought the, um, the propaganda said that planes couldn't possibly fly from anywhere enemy <laughs> to Japan. That's partly why I did the... Um, oh, here it is. Manchuko. Manchu Iwa, yeah, but this is Manchuria, which has turned into the puppet state of Manchuko, which was ruled by Japan. But, um, yeah, if the Chinese or Americans or somebody couldn't launch planes from there, then it was impossible to fly to the Japanese home islands and drop bombs on them at that time. Uh, another story with illustrations based on a real story, or just, um, I don't know. This looks like a very dialogue-heavy story about um, these women in either... It could be modern times and they dress traditionally, or it could be samurai times. Kind of hard to tell as Japan went into the more militaristic age. All right, something, something, something. Skip, skip, skip. Oh, another story about a woman. Daim... Daimau... Ma-u, Daimao. Okay, this is big. I don't know what this kanji is. Probably should know it. It looks pretty simple. Kind of stylized, though. Nice illustration. Sitting and watching the moonlight. And a story about judo or something. 
maybe an article about judo techniques or karate. Blah, blah, blah. Let's skip some stuff. Let's look at the interesting pictures. How about gardening? Doesn't look interesting. Uh, walking in the snow. This uh, photo of these schoolgirls. Say, uh, is that Gaxi? That's not Gakko. Something say. Sure. Jaw. I guess girl student. Something, 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 something. something. <laughs> The name of a school actually, a girls' school. And is this an article about a movie? Maybe got like, um, yeah, I guess this is a possibly like a text story retelling of a film. Oh. That was a uh, something was done back in the day. Britain had a paper called uh, The Boys Cinema, which um, sort of retold the stories of action movies as um, text stories illustrated with screen grabs. No home video back in them days. Uh, another very wide comic strip about somebody in the snow. I guess he thinks he's met a polar bear and it's actually a cat covered in many layers of snow. Uh, looks like stuff about bushcraft, more stories. Lots of adverts for hair care products. Right? Oh, the inevitable samurai story, as usual. Always the samurai story. Hurry up. Kodomo Ie no Hikari. So this is like... The E N O Hikari is kind of aimed at children anyway, but this is even more aimed at children. It's like big writing. Uh, all of the kanji have these simple letters called furigana next to them, which means um you can read them. And if you understand the vocabulary, like children who learn Japanese as a native language know what the words mean, even if they can't write them. Article about houses are made. Uh, more simplistic story. Seems to be set in the Wild West, maybe. Another kind of simplistic story. Oh, it's, a play, it's a play script, actually. It's got names at the top of each, top of each line. Uh, play script for children to act. And uh, I guess this is an article about studying. See the illustrations. Kids at desks writing. Let Kumi I advert for shoes, I suppose. Right, that's the uh, E.A. Nahagali. How long is this stream? 27 minutes, right, let's get a wiggle on. Right, and the big one, the Shufu no Tomo, the um, housewife's friend. July 1936. Right, really better not go for everything in this, it's going to take all night. Okay, the fold-out contents page with some um, adverts. <laughs> Oops, it's a swimsuit edition. Okay. Just a... Uh, the fashionable beach wear, a gigantic horse, or just a <laughs> horse photographed close up so it looks really big compared to the other ones. Marukin, this is an advert, I suppose. Uh, pictures of waterfalls, frozen waterfall. Lion, a lion. Something, something, right? A nice, uh, these are quite well colorized photos. Photos actually looks like color photos, but they were black and white and then colorized. But it's been it's a good job of it. Look like color photos, but you can kind of tell the colors aren't quite natural. <laughs> but yeah, fashion pages, I suppose. Up how to make your own clothes. Uh, oh, some more photos, photo articles. I guess this is about um, I don't know, July no doku. This, yeah, July no, 6th. Something, something very complicated kanji. It's probably been simplified in recent times. It's um, down on the farm, messing about in boats, having fun in summer. <laughs> I suppose uh, more pictures playing tennis. Skip loads of stuff there, right? Another nicely colorized photo of a woman in a kimono. Um, an advert for shaved ice. Oh, it's like, oh, it's like early Photoshop fishing in a cup of tea. Mini woman doing the makeup of a full grown one. Or doing the makeup of a giant presenting a jump between buildings. Yeah, it's amusing in the 30s, I suppose. Right, uh, article about putting on lipstick or something. 
blah blah blah. Let's get to the interesting stuff. Caring for children, dancing. Right, the stories, the interesting bit. This is a little text, big illustrations. Could be poems actually. I don't know. No, it's not poems. It's not. Yeah, you know, just like little, very short stories or something. Things to do in the summer. Very westernised city scene. Lots of techie Sega. Uh, flying fish. Right. Text story. Like a romantic drama stuff. Uh, uh, battleships. Sen can he ear bin. <laughs> Something about the navy, I'm supposing. Article about life on a battleship. Now oh, this woman got to visit a battleship, I guess. Guy cleaning his rifle. Visiting the kitchen, seeing the sailors cooking. Guess another... Oh, here we are. Long coot. Eeyot, eeyot. And a photo illustrated article. Some boys going off to... This looks like a scout uniform, kind of. Good if you're going to school. Right, well, that's about speeding up, right? Pictures taken from aeroplanes. Story with lots of pictures. Um, something else. A story about a woman getting sick, I suppose. Ha no tsuki o tsugono te shinde. Oh, this means death. Did she die? Okay. Ka Karen. Ka Karen. Karen. Okay. Karen is kind of a valid Japanese name. Just coincidentally similar to Karen. Not Seizio. This looks like Shoujo, but it's a Seizio. I guess a maybe archaic way of um, pronouncing it. Something like clowns. You know, life in the circus. Some photos, some illustrations. This is a story. Right, the inevitable samurai time story. <laughs> Yeah, more of this red wash over black and white, black and white wash, and then a red filter put over it. Looks kind of nice. Inevitable sumo story. It's like articles about life in old times. Planes, uh, gas masks. Is this about um air raids as well. <laughs> you can tell where the government's thoughts were going. It's impossible for J Japan to be air raided, but just in case, you have to use a gas mask or improvise your own. Nine line line, Cebu, Cebu, your Cebu is a big corporation. Oh, what's this? A um, cartoon about Britain and Germany. France, uh, uh, France is asking Britain for help, and Germans are getting suspiciously close to the Rhine. Italy, Italy, not. Italy is climbing up a ladder with a model plane, and Britain is looking complacent. Uh, I don't know. Mara, Marata. Malta. Oh, I see. This is Malta. Surrounded by Italian battleships and planes and Britons kind of complacently looking on. But mind you, the war hadn't actually started then. There's something else about the Soviet Union and Japan, but I mean, um, and Germany. I don't know, what's this? Gardening articles, blah, blah, blah. Another written story, seems to be set in modern times, 1937. Yeah, it's about making furniture, yeah. Well, deep dive, this is about... Life in Russia, maybe. It's got a Christian's looks orthodox. Alfonso Dubor. Vaguely know that name. Is this not about Russia? It could be about Eastern Europe before the Soviet Union conquered it. Before the Soviet Union and Germany conquered it. I guess like Christian life in a convent. He's like got a kind of Russian hat. Suppression of Christianity in the Soviet Union, or the preservation of Orthodoxy in um, Eastern Europe before the Soviet Union took it over. <laughs> Perhaps more stories, more articles. Yeah, more of these wash illustrations. These are really nice, actually. 
well reproduced too. I've got a um an old boys magazine from the thirties or forties, and these illustrations are really washed out in it. You can barely see anything. These are really well reproduced. This is actually higher quality paper though. It's like semi glossy paper, not just newsprint. Uh, babies. Uh, how to feed and care for babies, I guess, how to wash babies, how to stop them choking and so on. This is a really long article. Right. Uh, DIY around the house, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, nice picture. Yeah. All right, I guess this is an advert for kimono. You can choose your patterns. Nice firework pattern there. Probably look better in colour. Uh, some pink newsprinty type paper. These are crests of like prominent families in samurai times, which were still kind of around as the uh, Zaibatsu at the time. <laughs> and some of these survived as um, corporate logos, which were businesses started up by these rich Zaibatsu. This looks kind of like Mitsubishi. And she said, is that this one's still around too? <laughs> Mitsubishi was kind of a stylized aeroplane propeller, but was also similar to some of these Zaibatsu logo and little Yonkoma <laughs> comic strips. Blah, blah, blah. Another story. This is about a sick boy and she's phoning the doctor. Uh, don't know, blah, blah, blah. Lots of dialogue in the story. You can tell by the um, right, photo illustrated article about lipstick. <laughs> Let's fold out piece. This is about children's fashion. Clothes for children, possibly ones you can buy, or maybe there'll be patterns for how to make them yourselves. There's more on the back as well. Oh, yeah, here we are. Patterns to make those clothes. <laughs> this is going to go on for a while. Right, it's an <laughs> extremely long section about there's even more photos of the clothes to make and curtains, tablecloths, blah blah blah. I remind you, the war hadn't started. Once World War II started, there was all sorts about um, how to make your own clothes and stuff because you can't buy any new ones. Uh, cooking articles about food. Uh, insect articles. I guess um, which insects uh, might cause allergic reactions in your children and which ones are harmless. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a Fu Manchu. Right, very stereotyped something about China. Oh, is this a... Oh, Kodomo no Tomo. The, the children's friend, okay, it's like a, this is also a page for children inside this uh, magazine for housewives, so I guess this is a very stereotyped story about China, I guess the uh, evil mandarins were just enriching themselves and now the Chinese have been liberated by glorious national socialism. Japan wasn't particularly national socialist. They were allied with national socialism and fascism, they were more kind of like an militaristic monarchy in Japan. That's actually like pretty nicely coloured. Alternating red washes with um kind of the four colour method. Yellow, blue, red, green and black. But not blended very much. This is bordering on the four colour method. This is really nice actually. And oh some comic strips. Kompei-san, Kompei-san to Osan Tian Chen. Kompei-san to Osan Chen. Right, that's these two characters in Samurai Times. Oh, they're fighting Kappa. They're like um turtle-ish monsters who like cucumbers and attack humans, and you have to put cucumbers in the river, but they climb up a tree and throw rocks at them instead. Is this a Kitsune? The magical fox that... um. No, Kitsune have more than one tail. There's an elephant. This is nicely coloured too. Yeah, this um, samurai and his son fighting different mythical monsters in Japan. And elephants. And I guess this is like a bad ninja rogue samurai. Oh, right, a text story about schoolgirls now, I guess. I don't know. Big girls bullying a little one, but she's got friends of animals or something. I don't know. This is really nice. This is the four colour method too, but actually blended. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do a deep dive on this one. And with not too much trouble, I should be able to actually read this story too. <laughs> he says. Oh, full colour comic strip. <laughs> this is really good. 
really good uh, material. Kind of simplistic style, but yeah, full colour using the four colour method. I don't know how long this is. No, it's switched back to it's like alternating between this red wash and full colour. Oh, okay, it's only that many pages. And then full colour advert, and we're back to the black and white. Another story. This one's got Fruity Gunner too. Looks a bit more sophisticated for like um, maybe older children and young teenagers. <laughs> Uh, set in samurai times. Yeah, I've got any viewers? Oh, I've got a, I've got one spam viewer. It's come here to advertise Vark taken and disappeared. Okay, hello spam viewer. Okay, fair enough. Right. Yep, that's the uh, Shufu no Tomo, and we're now up to nearly forty-one minutes. Right, this is getting a bit long. No one's going to watch this whole thing again. Right, quickly show you something else I bought. Boom. The uh, complete catalogue of British comics, including Press Guide from 1985. I've actually got this in the UK, but I found it again in a bookshop while I was looking for the um, the Tankabon of Red Dragon. So I thought I might, might as well buy a second copy to have in Japan rather than get my parents to post it to me. So yes, yeah, this is a brilliant book from 1985, so considerably out of date and the price guide is essentially useless kind of overview of British comics that <laughs> concentrates rather too much heavily rather too heavily on um on like, the American comics coming to ja coming to the UK even and um the the kind of weird period in the late 1940s where British comics like kind of loads of them sprung up from these fly-by-night publishers trying to imitate American comics. And then uh, many, many pictures, several in colour, about um, whoosh, about various comics in Britain. Going back into the Victorian times, so funny folks, comic cuts, the holiday, big budget. Ali Sloper's Half Holiday, kind of famous as the first really regular comic in the UK. I think it ran into the 20th century, started around 1888, I believe. Oh, 1884, actually. Okay. Aries Budget, C.H. Ross's Variety Paper, The Funny Wonder. Yeah, this, um, this does concentrate only on comic strip heavy publications, so um, no story papers. Tiger Tim's Weekly, I've got one of these from 1940, and I'm um, this is from 1921. In 1940, it looks almost exactly the same. Jungle Jinx, I bet that's wonderfully un -PC. Comic Life. <laughs> I think it's got a weird format later that was kind of square. They cut the bottom off. I saw on Lou Stringer's blog years and years ago. Sparks and Little Sparks. Chick Zone. My granny used to talk about Chick Zone, but she hasn't got any... Um, well, she didn't have any ones left over from the 30s when she used to read it, but um, she'd always talk about Chick Zone. It's something she used to read. The Play Box. There was a spin-off of the story paper Chatterbox called... Um... Oh, hello, Spammer. I've got two Spammers now. There was a spin-off of the story paper Chatterbox called The Play Box, but I think that might have ended, and then this new Play Box started. The Firefly, this said one of the first kind of cinematic-type uh, British comics in... I was looking for the list for ages, but I couldn't find any. <laughs> the Knockout Radio Fun. I've got the super rare Radio Fun Annual, which is probably not actually that rare. <laughs> Cost about 70 quid. Uh, the Beano, the Dandy, everyone knows them. Sparky, Nutty, Plug, much later. So a spin-off of just one character from the ensemble um, Bash Street Kids, which are in the Beano. They're in the Beano much later than this. This is the first issue. Nutty, that's where Banana Man started. A Man of Steel came out. They like made a joke web page advertising a big budget Banana Man film called The Man of Peel, but it was only like a, a joke page, I think. They never had any intention of making it. And yeah, I'm not going to go for all of these. The Rocket. There was an earlier Rocket, which is a story paper. Very weird format. I've got two issues of it in the UK. This was a later Rocket, which is a copy of The Eagle, but it was um 
briefly edited by Douglas Bader, who was the Spitfire pilot who um, had no legs. <laughs> Mickey Mouse Weekly, that was a shot in the arm of British comics back in the day. Full colour, full colour reproduction. Right, so skip, skip, skip. Joke comics. Let's get to the interesting ones. Summer specials, Christmas issues, uh, supplements. He's like, um, you know, a lot of other things about British comics never mention these, like, um, comics given away in other magazines or from supermarkets and stuff, or even, at, um, when I was really young, there was a, a shoe shop gave away a really small comic as well. Barely remember it. But it was like it was when everyone was like it was the green mania of the early nineties. So he had this really awesome car with big chrome exhaust pipes, and then we're like, oh no, his car's electric. Those exhaust pipes are just for show. Honest, an electric car of a thousand mile range that goes four hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, royal wedding issues. Here, yeah, what's the interesting stuff? The um. The mini comics, or like the um, short run and one shot comics that came out in the late 40s. Here we are Adventures, Comic Capers, All Fun, All Star, more All Star Comic Capers. Adventures, not Adventure, the DC Thompson story paper, which I think was still running at the time. It's like I added an S to the end and made up this one. Yeah, this is all like spiv stuff. Fly by night publishers would like pop up, put out one or two comics and disappear, appear again next week. It was um, rationing didn't allow people to start a new regular publication. So they'd um, be like all star, all fun, all star comic. These were like issue one, two and three. All fun. Oh, yeah, all fun comic, all star, all fun, all star comic. They were like issues one, two, three and four. But they all had different names to pretend to be one shots. New funnies, topical funnies, war comics, thrill comics, fresh fun, extra fun. All pretending to be one shots, but actually weren't. Back from the dead, a um, horror comic, possibly with reprinted US US material. Uh, super adventures, jolly western, jolly chuckles, jolly adventures. <laughs> Comic color. This is um, Gerald G. Swan. He was one of the bigger nineteen forties fly by night publishers, and um. Commie Colour was somehow a regular publication. I don't know, quite know how I did it. I've got a Commie Colour album from 1949 at home in the UK. That's kind of interesting. About 75% of it's all drawn by the same artist. Woodland Comics, Curly's Comic, Tompus Comics, all for little children. More one-shots and short ones. The uh, Surefire Comic, Nimble Norman, Jimmy Brindle, Jolly Jack. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, it's really tiny ones. So, um, yeah, if they couldn't get a paper allocation to make um, like a full size, so to speak, comic, they'd use offcuts and things to make these really tiny comics, which are now hen's teeth rare. And this one was printed on silver paper, Silver Star, the Silver King, printed on silver paper because that was just what the paper they could get hold of. <laughs> yeah, so these really tiny ones. And this guy. Dennis Gifford, he um, he was around in the late full season, was a collector of all of these, and like his collection, wherever it is now, has possibly got some the only copy that's left in the world of some of these. <laughs> it's Marvel Man, Master Man, who's <laughs> like a Nazi, Electro Man, obviously ripping off um, uh, Captain Marvel, as well. <laughs> More really tiny comics, <laughs> the gay comic. Little Marvel, I guess another ripoff of Captain Marvel, but done on really tiny paper. The tiny comic, yeah, <laughs> the big little comic. He's just like made of really tiny offcuts of paper from the floor of the factory. Westerns, blah blah blah. How long are we now? Coming up on fifty minutes. I guess I better wrap this up. I'll do a. I'll say I'll do a deep dive into this book. I really want to do a deep dive into some of these actual comics. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, is that the Perishes? Man of Steel from the British Steel Corporation. I have a promotional comic with the actual Man of Steel, Superman. This is the um, the one about stopping smoking. Oh, here we are, the Perishes. 
Now, these are collections of newspaper strips. So the Perishers is like the the British Snoopy. That's the British Snoopy. Very hairy dog. Uh, Rupert, obviously very long-running. Fosdyke Saga, that was also a long-running kind of a... I think that was an ongoing story, like Doonesbury or something else in America. Andy Cap, everyone knows Andy Cap. And Jane, the kind of a titillating... Oh no, my clothes fell off comic. Rufus some Fluke, I don't know what that is. Some more kind of weird short-lived ones. Yeah, specials, I guess. Red Dagger, this was... um. Was that the reprints of DC Thompson story paper serials? I can't remember now. Something very weird. Some back cover. Right, anyway, and then the price guide, obviously, completely out of date now. Lists every British comic they could find and think of up to that point. Obviously, there's probably some stuff missing now, but they didn't have the internet then to do research. The Bowser comic produced four issues between 1947 and 48. <laughs> and yeah, there's some. Um, if I remember from flicking through this. Back in the day, there's some like really dodgy sounding National Front comics in here too. Class War comics, New Times, I guess it's a... One put out by some Communist Party or something. Party or something. Oh, there's Chick Zone. How many issues? 1,605 issues. Can you find any dodgy... Dodgy sounding stuff? Dr. Snuggles Holiday Special. That doesn't sound particularly dodgy. I guess it depends who Dr. Snuggles is. Right. Okay, can't find anything interesting. In here, Hot Rods and Racing Cars, US Weeping. I've seen... I saw one of them on um, that Scanlation website, the some legalish. I should do a review of that, actually. It was kind of interesting. Well, yeah, lots of American reprints, too. <laughs> Yep, that's uh, the comic book, British, co British comic book catalogue. Lots of interesting pictures of stuff I can never afford or find. Now, I'm sure I had something else I wanted to go into too, but we're coming up on 53 minutes, so let's end this stream here. My mouse is still working. Mouse is, oh, yeah, I unplugged the mouse, didn't I? That'll explain a few things. Okay, that's uh, the end of this whole stream. A bit longer than expected, never mind. Uh, I'm trying to think of a name for these streams. I thought about the uh, calling it the Wretched Scabby Vulture, like Comic Skate's Dodgy Flat Roof Pub, but I'm not sure. Don't know yet. Or maybe call it the uh, the Number Six Study or something, after George Orwell's article about boys' papers. Yeah, I don't know. Vote in the comments. <laughs>